This is probably the most popular question or remark about the Roadcaster video that I've been fielding on here. Why doesn't this, the Roadcaster video, have 4K support? And when I say it's a popular comment, I mean it was popular. And it was interesting to see how many people are disappointed that it was released without this support. So then, let's talk about that and why it's literally an impossible feat for any company right now trying to release a 4K switcher at this price point. And it all starts with storage. Stick around though, there is way more to this issue. We'll get to that. You see, 4K is four times bigger than 1080 in pixel count, but it goes a little deeper than that. Dynamic range is usually much higher on 4K devices, meaning file sizes grow. Also, just having a larger color space can cause massive swings in file sizes. In fact, as you can see by this graphic here, sizing is exponential when leveling up your resolution. And when this is the reality, that has a massive impact on your storage. So then for this exercise, let's use the IO of this Roadcaster video as an example. This unit can plausibly take six video inputs as well as audio. Let's not forget that. But let's be conservative here and let's just take the four HDMI as inputs. And then let's use my camera, the Sony a7C II as an example. Now, I pulled up a 20 minute file I had for my second channel, which was shot at 4K 30. The end result was a file that was almost 32 gigs, which is about 1.6 gigs per minute ish. That means that four inputs recording files simultaneously would require 128 gigs for just 20 minutes of recording. And that would mean a full hour would be 384 gigs. So basically a third of a terabyte. Oh, and by the way, that does not include audio nor the summed version of the video. And again, you also have to remember there are also two other USB inputs that can also take 4K video. So a half a terabyte seems like a pretty good bet. Now I can just hear you type in the comment, but Aiden, I wouldn't be putting video like that through it. Okay, well then here's the thing. For a company like Rode to release something like the Rodecaster video with 4K support, they would have to make sure it could do those kinds of numbers. They wouldn't be releasing a video switcher for 4K webcams, right? And the Sony a7C II is basically the entry level full frame 4K camera to do these tests with. Other cameras would probably have bigger numbers. I mean, sure, there might be some compression algorithms to get those numbers smaller, but how much smaller? And even if they were able to do it, you immediately introduce a whole other problem to the mix. And that is processing power. Yes, that's right. It isn't just magical fairies in the Roadcaster video doing all the heavy lifting in there. Now you're asking for a CPU to do exponentially more work with 4K, meaning more power, meaning more everything. And that isn't just for encoding either. You also want the unit to do transitions, overlays, host media, and all the things, which all those calculations are exponentially raised when you introduce such a massive swing in resolution. And that computational power doesn't just stop at the CPU. The memory required is also rather impressive. Remember, again, we aren't just talking about just any old 4K signal. If a brand like Rode is gonna sell 4K video switcher, it needs to be able to handle raw 4K with decently wide color sampling. Now, I should probably point out that yes, I do know about the Yellow Box Ultra, and I've been looking into it for some time now. I'm waiting to get my hands on one before I do anything like try to comment on its capabilities. Now, yes, I have watched reviews, but what I have seen has been kind of lacking for the most part on specs. I know this sounds dumb, but not all 4K is equal. And there's some things in their marketing material that has me skeptical. I've heard from a few sources that it does 1080 very well, yet on the 4K, it's been weirdly quiet. Now, don't take that as an endorsement either way on its capabilities, and I'm hoping to hear back from them soon so I can try to put a video together on it. Until then, I'm just gonna have to wait and see. So on to the next issue, we also have to explore the actual impact of 4K content and how important it is for content creators. And this is where it gets a kind of interesting, probably a little spicy as I'm gonna have people yelling at me in the comments. 
Now, according to Global Stats, the most used screen resolution worldwide is still 1080p, way ahead of the pack, hovering around 24% over the past year. The next closest is 1366 by 768, which is one of the resolutions that are considered 720p, and that's sitting around 14%. 1440p is only represented by just over 2%. Remember, while 4K may be taking off on this side of the world, not everyone has the tech or the bandwidth to do it. Okay, let's back this up a little further with more stats. In a relatively recent poll on Steam, 4K gamers only made up just under 4%. Again, leading the pack, 1080p at over 56%. Gotta give a nod to the 1440 players there, gaining ground at just under 20%. Now, not to mention, and this is probably the most damning, in 2023, YouTube reported that over 90% of their worldwide traffic came from mobile devices on screens that really don't show off the whole 4K experience well. And not to shock you, but there's a lot of phones these days that don't even have 4K resolution because, let's be honest, the idea is kind of ridiculous. Plus, I should mention that the rest of the world doesn't exactly have the same internet as us here in the West. This map shows the mean download speed around the world. And yes, there are a lot of countries that are very low on that scale. However, whatever they're doing in Iceland, I want some. Okay, I can see I'm kind of losing you here, making excuses for corporate greed. I hear ya. So then, let's take a look at what actual 4K video switching devices look like. Oh, huh. Okay, yeah, I get that. Remember, one of the most respected companies at releasing video switchers is Blackmagic. And look at their lineup of similarly priced switchers. Even the ATEM SDI Extreme is, yeah, 108060. So then, with all that knowledge, when is 4K video switching going to become a thing for peasants like us? Well, it depends on a few other technologies moving forward. Storage is probably the biggest problem. I mean, we have the ability, but the price of fast storage is still not exactly cheap, and some of the larger size drives still pull down a pretty penny. But also, we need a world that is ready to consume 4K product en masse, and clearly we aren't there yet. However, I should also address the one other complaint that was somewhat closely related, and that was asking for 4K input support, meaning you can throw in a 4K signal and have it downsampled. And... Well, that's exactly what I'm recording at right now. And if I'm being honest, that's exactly what I filmed my review of the Roadcaster video in, unwittingly, I must add. I thought I'd switched the video resolution and found out later when I was going through the files. You can actually see a couple of the punch-ins I used during the review were actually rather crisp. And to give you an idea, this is in 4K right now, we'll do a punch-in at 120, and we'll do a punch-in at 140. Now using this camera, which is my 1080 Canon T7i, this is at 100%, this is at 120, and this is at 140. Now to compare those 140s, this is 140 on the 1080p, and this is 140 on the Sony a7C II, which is 4K. So whether or not Rode intended for this, or perhaps is just not officially supported yet, from what I can tell, there isn't any red tape across the unit denying entry of 4K signals, so go nuts. My thought, and I have no way of knowing this, but I bet 4K input will be offered as a feature in a future firmware update. Now, don't hold me to that, but it does kind of seem likely. Also though, I think people are losing sight on who Rode is and who they're releasing products for. Remember when the Rodecaster Pro was released? It created a wave of new content creators that felt out of their depth in the audio world prior to that. That board made things simple, but it also held a standard for quality. It was so impactful that it was adopted by broadcast outlets and it became the standard for everyone else to strive for. And Rode has only continued that tradition with every release since. And this, the Rodecaster video, does just that, but with video. It makes something like the A10 Mini more accessible for everyone while not sacrificing quality, as well as adding much needed features like proper audio inputs. You see, this release has paved the way for more video content from more creators, while still having a standard of quality that a lot of people wouldn't be able to achieve without the Rodecaster video. So if you are one of those holding off waiting for the next 4K video switcher, well, you go ahead and do just that. But you might be waiting longer than you think for this at this price point. Cheers, guys, and thanks for watching.